Motions to dismiss against original creditors. Brought to you by yourlegallegup.com, your advantage if you are being sued by debt collectors. Someone asked me recently to do a video on motions to dismiss brought against creditors or original creditors. The thing to remember is that motions to dismiss are the same no matter whom you are bringing them against. They do the same thing legally, whether it's against debt collectors or debt buyers or original creditors. And what they do is test the pleadings or challenge the jurisdiction. They aren't necessarily everything you might hope them to be. We'll discuss what they are and their limitations in this video. What does test the pleadings mean? It means that you look at the allegations and first decide whether they provide you fair notice of the claim against you in notice states, or whether they state facts constituting a claim in fact pleading states, which most of them are. We'll talk about service of process and jurisdiction in a little bit. In either case, you consider the allegations made as true for purposes of your motion. In other words, a motion to dismiss is not your chance to argue that they are lacking in evidence or can't prove some part of their case. It's just a question of whether they actually state a valid claim against you. In the federal law, a motion to dismiss based on the argument that they do not state a claim is brought pursuant to Rule 12b-6. Such a motion can be brought at any time since the essence of it is that the plaintiff has not actually claimed you did anything wrong in the eyes of the law. A state law motion to dismiss on the same basis wouldn't be brought under Federal Rule 12b-6, of course. It will be brought under the appropriate state rule of civil procedure, whatever that may be. For debt buyers, the basis of your motion to dismiss might be failure to show a party in interest or a true case or controversy, which are basically the same thing. One person cannot sue on somebody else's right. Claiming that they aren't the proper party in interest is basically claiming they're trying to do that. And this is the basis of our suggestion that sometimes it's a good idea to challenge the chain of title of the debt ownership to make sure the actual owner and not someone else is suing you. That's one of the dirty tricks in our beastie area of debt collector dirty tricks. This is less of a concern, obviously, with original creditors. In a notice state, you could bring a motion to dismiss against an original creditor if its claim is too vague to understand, i.e. that it fails to give you notice of the claim against you. In a fact state, it would just be fa for failure to state a claim at all. That would that is, it would be lacking some element of the claim supposedly made against you. This is surprisingly common, common, but it's still infrequent. A couple of things to remember. While a motion to dismiss for failure to state a claim can be brought at any time, a motion to dismiss for failure to give adequate notice would need to be brought before filing an answer. Because your argument there is it's too vague to let you know how to answer. There are also motions to dismiss because of lack of jurisdiction, and these are of two kinds. First, there's the argument that it's the wrong court or kind of court. A claim for breach of contract won't work in federal court, usually. This kind of motion can be brought at any time since it goes to the court's power to hear the case at all. And then there are motions to dismiss for lack of personal jurisdiction. That is, some reason the court lacks power over you. The reasons for this are usually that you live outside of the jurisdiction and nothing about the debt connects you to the court, or that you didn't get served correctly. These motions must be brought before answering the petition. Answering is a sort of agreement that the court can hear the case against you. In other words, you waive the motion if you answer the lawsuit other than by motion. File a motion to dis filing a motion to dismiss the whole suit means that you don't have to file an answer at that time. If the court denies your motion, it will order you to answer and give you 10 days usually uh, to do so. It'll give you some time. If the court grants your motion, it will give the debt collector an opportunity to change the suit in whatever way is necessary. When they file their new petition, it will be as if nothing had ever happened. You will have to decide all over again whether to answer or file another motion to dismiss. 
Don't assume they got it right the second time either. Obviously, every time you do that, and especially every time you win, you increase the chance the plaintiff will just drop the whole thing. It can work out that way, but it usually doesn't. Your job is to do the things that you're supposed to do and put yourself on the side of the angels, as they say. That means do enough right things and you will usually win. Now, in my experience, debt defendants often place too many hopes and motions to dismiss. They overuse them although not on personal jurisdiction. A lot of defendants think they can challenge the plaintiff's evidence in a motion to dismiss. In most cases, you'll just be better off answering the lawsuit and proceeding to discovery. That's where you'll get the facts to prove that they don't have something they need to prove their case. But this definitely does not apply to motions based on lack of jurisdiction. You don't want to waive those rights unless you have some particular reason for doing so. Remember that if you don't live in the county of the, of the court where they're suing you, they may not have jurisdiction over you. Look at your rules of civil procedure before you do anything. They'll tell you a lot about what you need to do. <coughs> Remember that you never have the right to seek verification based on a lawsuit. You must answer or move to dismiss or they'll get a default judgment. The rules of civil procedure do not change based on whether it's a debt collector or original creditor. Now, about getting your motion to dismiss heard by the court and decided, um, the rules on that vary from court to court. In some, dis in some jurisdictions, it's up to the party bringing the, the motion to, do, to uh, get it heard and ruled on by the court. And in others, um, it'll be up to the party that has the, to the plaintiff, the party who's against the motion to get it heard by the court and decided. If your motion never gets decided, then you will never have to answer. But this doesn't mean you don't need to pre prepare for trial because in some cases you'll get to trial and the court will rule on it there. Filing a motion to dismiss should not stop you from conducting discovery and doing other things that you need to do. Helping people protect their rights is what we do. Protect what's yours and don't let the debt collectors rip you off. Take action to protect yourself from the debt collectors and help others do the same. Please like this video, share it with anybody you think can use it, subscribe and comment as all these things help others find our materials. You Your legal leg up. Com.